An oscilloscope can be used to record and display the sound waves picked up by microphones connected to it. Here's an example of an oscilloscope. We can connect devices like microphones to this. The microphone is then used to detect sound waves and convert them to electrical signals. The oscilloscope takes these signals and uses them to display a wave pattern on its screen. This wave pattern tells us about the properties of the wave. Let's take a look at what's on the screen in more detail. The wave patterns are displayed on a centimetre square grid. Here's a closer look at the sort of pattern we'd see on the screen. This wave pattern represents a sound wave. But remember that sound waves are longitudinal waves, so they shouldn't have this shape. This is because we're not looking at an image of the wave, but rather how the displacement of the wave at the microphone changes over time. In other words, this is actually a graph with time on our x-axis. Specifically, each horizontal centimeter represents a certain unit of time. In this case, each centimeter represents one millisecond. It's important to understand that the distance between two peaks on the display does not tell us the wavelength. As our horizontal scale is time, we instead use this to measure the period. Now let's look at the main application of oscilloscopes at GCSE. Some methods of measuring speed of sound use oscilloscopes. In your exam, you may be asked to recall and describe a method of measuring the speed of sound. This is only one way of doing this. You don't need to give this exact method or even one using an oscilloscope. We'll look at other potential methods elsewhere though and focus on the simplest way of using an oscilloscope. So for step one, connect two microphones to the oscilloscope and measure the distance between them. Most oscilloscopes are capable of having multiple input devices connected to them. We'll see how this affects the display in a bit. So we can connect two microphones to the oscilloscope and measure the distance between their sensors. Let's suppose this is 0.8 meters. In step two, play a short sound that passes directly through both microphones. We only want to use a short sound, called a sound pulse, which will help us when reading the display, and we'll see why that is soon. This sound needs to be directed through both microphones, so the sound travels the same distance as we just measured. Then in step three, use the oscilloscope reading to determine the difference in time between each microphone detecting the sound. So here we've set up the oscilloscope display so that we have a reading from the first mic on this top line and the second mic on the bottom. Since we used a short sound pulse, the readings are the short signals instead of the full wave patterns we saw earlier. These signals show us the times the sound reached each microphone. Now to do our reading, we first want to adjust the time scale of the display, so both these signals can easily be seen, like in this example. Let's suppose we set the scale so that one square represents 0.5 milliseconds. Since the signals are short, it's easy to measure the distance between them on the display. This would have been much harder if we had long wave patterns. Then using our scale, we can see this represents a time of 2.5 milliseconds. This is the time it took the sound to travel from the first microphone to the second. And finally, step four, use the time and distance measurements to calculate the wave speed. Remember that speed is equal to distance divided by time. In this case, our distance would be 0.8 meters, the distance we measured between the two microphones and the time would be 2.5 milliseconds, or 0.0025 seconds, which is the time it takes the sound to travel this distance. So our method gives an estimation of 320 meters per second for the speed of sound. Now, even if you decide not to use this method when explaining how to measure the speed of sound, you may encounter exam questions which involve reading an oscilloscope display. So it's best you still understand this method and how we interpret the wave pattern scene. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com 
and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.